Oh, really? Wow. Oh, let's try it. Oh, three minutes left. OK. So in this example, guys, again, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, we're going to s replace f of x with y. Swap the x and y's. And now we got to solve for y. So this is where students usually have trouble, because there's two y's. Well, the first thing, guys, is we have to get the y off the bottom. So I'm going to multiply by a y on both sides. So yx equals 2y plus 1. Now, you guys did learn this in Algebra 1. How do you solve an equation when you have the variable on both sides? You get them to the same side. yx minus 2y is equal to 1. Now, what do you do? You're supposed to combine like terms. But we can't combine like terms. That's yx and that's 2y, right? But you can factor. And if you factor out a y, you're left with x minus 2 equals 1. And now, you can divide by x minus 2. And you get y equals 1 over x minus 2. And therefore, you could say, therefore, f inverse of x is equal to 1 over x minus 2. I know I kind of went through that fast, but let it sink in. A couple things. Let's look at the domain. Because again, this is a great question I would ask. I would say, hey guys, what's the range of this function? And you're like, dang it. I know the domain of f of x. The domain of f of x is all real numbers except for 0. But I don't know what the range is. And I don't have my graphing calculator to graph it. But then I say, oh, but if I find the inverse, the domain of the inverse is the range of the function. The domain of the inverse is the range of the function. So then I find the inverse and I say, oh, I know what that is. That's all real numbers except for 2. So the range, which is the domain of my inverse, is negative infinity to 2, union 2 to infinity. No calculator needed. Wow. All right. <laughs> 